Welcome to our program, The China Briefing. Today, we have some exciting news to cover. First, JP Morgan predicts a resurgence in IPO activities in Hong Kong and mainland China, driven by a stock market rally that has buoyed investor confidence. This is great news for capital-hungry tech startups looking to make their mark in the primary market. Next, the US, EU, and other democracies have criticized China's recent military exercises around Taiwan, urging restraint to avoid destabilizing the region. This comes in the wake of the inauguration of Taiwan's new president, William Lai Ching Te. Lastly, China, South Korea, and Japan are set to hold their first trilateral summit since 2019 in Seoul. The meeting aims to stabilize regional relations and address security concerns, highlighting the importance of maintaining a secure relationship despite differing security interests. Please stay tuned for the detailed coverage of these stories. South China Morning Post, a bullish trend in Hong Kong's stock market has significantly boosted valuations and investor sentiment, leading to a resurgence in fundraising activities on local and mainland Chinese bourses, according to J.P. Morgan Chase. Stoward Leanett, J.P. Morgan's head for the Asia-Pacific region, noted that new IPO candidates have become more pragmatic about their pricing expectations. Technology startups are anticipated to be a major growth driver in the primary market. The recent rally in the Hang Seng Index and the Shanghai Composite Index has added over US$1 trillion US dollars in capitalization, encouraging investors who have been buoyed by supportive policies from Beijing and portfolio rebalancing. This optimistic outlook was echoed by Cam Xing Kuang, JP Morgan's chairwoman for North Asia, who highlighted the improved market sentiment and eagerness of companies to raise funds. The positive trend is expected to continue with strong earnings from major firms like Tencent Holdings and Baidu, and increased support from Beijing to counteract a prolonged slump in the housing market. South China Morning Post, the European Union, along with lawmakers from the US, Britain, and other democracies, condemned China's extensive military exercises around Taiwan, warning that such actions could destabilize the region and heighten cross-strait tensions. The EU emphasized its interest in preserving the status quo in the Taiwan Strait and opposed any unilateral forceful changes. Beijing's military drills, involving numerous aircraft and naval vessels, were described as punitive measures against Taiwanese separatist forces and a warning to external forces. The Interparliamentary Alliance on China, representing lawmakers from 35 countries, criticized Beijing's actions as provocative and a threat to regional peace. In response, China's consulate in New York defended the drills, accusing Taiwan's president William Lai of inciting separatism. The US, while not recognizing Taiwan as an independent state, opposes any forceful attempts to take the island and supports its military defense capabilities. The PLA's exercises aimed to test joint combat readiness and capabilities, though they were shorter and less intense than previous drills. South China Morning Post Leaders of China, Japan, and South Korea are set to meet in Seoul for a trilateral summit, their first since 2019, to stabilize relations amidst a volatile security environment. The summit, attended by Chinese Premier Lee Chiong, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, and South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol, aims to reinforce economic ties and counterbalance US-led security arrangements. Despite closer alliances with the US, both Japan and South Korea continue to maintain significant trade relations with China. The summit will likely focus on economic cooperation rather than resolving geopolitical conflicts, such as North Korea's nuclear advancements and differing stances on the Russia-Ukraine war. The meeting itself is significant, highlighting the interconnectedness of Northeast Asia and the desire for stable relations with China. U.S. policymakers should note that even Washington's closest allies seek secure relations with China, driven partly by concerns over potential unpredictability in U.S. foreign policy following the upcoming presidential election. South China Morning Post. New Frontier, chaired by Hong Kong's former financial secretary Anthony Lung, has acquired the Hong Kong Integrated Oncology Center, HKIOC, as part of its strategic expansion in the Greater Bay Area's healthcare sector. This acquisition, combined with New Frontier's Heal Oncology Center and Beijing-based United Family Healthcare, UFH, positions the group as one of the largest private oncology entities in Hong Kong. 
Lung emphasized the aim to establish a complementary cancer treatment landscape leveraging Hong Kong's access to cutting-edge drugs and international medical talent, alongside mainland China's price advantages due to centralized drug procurement. The rapidly growing cancer cases in both regions underscore the necessity for such an integrated approach. Co-founder Carl Wu highlighted the significant growth in oncology business revenue, reflecting the increasing demand for cancer treatment in the Bay Area. South China Morning Post. Chinese exporters, eager to maintain trade with Russia amid Western sanctions, have been facing significant challenges, particularly with payment delays. Many exporters, like Yeno Yang from Shandong, have struggled to open accounts at VTB Bank, the only Russian bank operating in China, due to stringent requirements and the suspension of forex services by smaller banks. Despite record high trade between China and Russia, the payment issues have led some exporters to consider withdrawing from the Russian market. The bilateral trade is mostly settled in yuan or ruble, but the risk of secondary US sanctions looms large, making Chinese banks cautious. Exporters like Rick Wang and Tom Du continue to navigate these difficulties, hoping for a resolution following high-level talks between Presidents Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin. The rigorous scrutiny of payments and the extended payment cycles are straining their operations, yet the strong demand from the Russian market keeps them invested. CNN. Kenyan mountaineer Joshua Cheruiot Kirui tragically died near the summit of Mount Everest, and his Nepali Sherpa, Nawang Sherpa, remains missing after their attempt to climb without supplemental oxygen. Kirui, a banker and passionate athlete from Nairobi, was found 20 meters from the summit, marking a samba end to his ambitious expedition. His last Instagram post detailed the rigorous preparations and risks associated with a no-oxygen ascent, highlighting his physical readiness and the emergency measures in place. Kirui's adventurous spirit was well known, having previously conquered peaks like MT Manaslu. His death adds to the over 300 fatalities recorded on Everest, a peak that draws climbers during the brief window in May when conditions are slightly more favorable. The search for Nawang Sherpa continues, as the mountaineering community mourns the loss of a determined and passionate climber. The Globe and Mail, the Women's National Basketball Association, WNBA, is set to make its Canadian debut with a new Toronto team starting in 2026. Businessman Larry Tannenbaum's Kilmer Sports Ventures secured the franchise, which will be the WNBA's 14th team, and will play at Toronto's 8,700-seat Coca-Cola Coliseum. Occasionally, Games will be held at the Scotiabank Arena and other Canadian venues. Teresa Resch, a former Raptors executive, will serve as the team's president. This landmark move marks the first WNBA team outside the United States, although Canada has previously hosted sold-out preseason games. Meanwhile, the Liberal government of Canada is embroiled in a controversy over withholding cabinet documents from a public inquiry into foreign interference, citing cabinet confidentiality. Justice Marie-Jo C. Hogue, leading the inquiry, noted the redactions and ongoing discussions about these privileges. Public Safety Minister Dominic LaBlanc had initially assured full access to secret documents, but nearly 10% of the documents provided were redacted. In the US, Ticketmaster and its parent company Live Nation are facing a lawsuit from the Justice Department for allegedly running an illegal monopoly on live events, which has driven up ticket prices and stifled competition. This follows public outcry after the Ticketmaster site crashed during a pre-sale for Taylor Swift's concert tour. The Globe and Mail, Power Corporation of Canada's sustainable investing arm, Power Sustainable, has closed its Shanghai office and wound down its China public equity strategy, which managed over $715 million in assets. The closure is part of a strategic realignment to focus on more profitable opportunities and raising third-party capital. Despite this, Power Corporation remains optimistic about China's economic prospects and continues to hold investments in mainland China's public equity markets through its qualified foreign institutional investor, QFII, license. Additionally, Power Corporation has a significant stake in China Asset Management Company, the country's second-largest mutual fund manager. This strategic shift comes as Western investment fund managers face challenges in China, with JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon noting the difficulties in the investment banking sector. Power Corporation aims to maximize value and meet return objectives through its climate-focused strategy, 
which manages around $3.8 billion in assets. Recently, Great West Life Co. Inc., a power corporation subsidiary, became a minority shareholder in Power Sustainable, committing to invest in its funds. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.